everybody. I'm going to show you how to do a randomization test for comparing two means. We'll use the StatKey software, and the idea is that in some kind of experimental situation where you're comparing a quantitative outcome for the individuals in two groups, we can determine whether or not there is a statistically significant difference in the means between the two groups. Once again, let me remind you of the five steps for significance testing. We're going to state a question, translate it to hypotheses, We'll gather and summarize data, which in this case will be quantitative. And we'll get a p-value from the randomization test, and that's where I'll show you how to use StatKey. And finally, we'll do what we always do, which is to interpret the p-value and draw some conclusions, and in particular state uh, a response to the question in plain language. So here's the example that we have in mind. It comes from the Statistical Sleuth by Ramsey and Schaefer. Does a dose of tubercle bacilli alter the lifespans of guinea pigs? So the main idea is that we're going to take some guinea pigs and we're going to randomly assign them to one of two groups. One group gets this bacilli treatment, the other group is a control group, and we want to determine whether the bacilli in some way alter the lifespans of the guinea pigs. So an individual is one guinea pig, our explanatory variable is the treatment, are they getting the bacilli or are they part of the control group? And then the response variable, the main outcome of the study, the lifespan of the guinea pigs measured in days. So we've got to translate our um, question about will the bacilli affect the guinea pig's lifespans into null and alternative hypotheses. These hypotheses use the symbol mu in this case because we're comparing means. And the null hypothesis is that the means for the populations are equal. It's the hypothesis that says the bacilli treatment makes no difference whatsoever. The alternative hypothesis says no, in some way these averages change. So in words, we'll say the null hypothesis, there is no association between treatment and outcome. The mean lifespans are, are going to be the same with or without the introduction of the bacilli into the guinea pigs. So on to the data. Remember, we said that it's quantitative data, so we want to compare the two groups. So here's a dot plot that will allow us to do that at first. Um, we notice that the bacilli group is skewed to the right, and there are two potential outliers. In fact. The box plots coming up will show us be justified in calling them outliers, so we do wonder why those two guinea pigs at almost 600 days in the bacilli group tended to live so long. We do already see a difference between the two groups, and that is that the control group, which almost looks like it might be bimodal, um, has quite a spread of um, the number of days for the lifespan, and the bacilli group seems to be more clustered down around 200 with a pronounced skew to the right. So there's some, it seems already like there's something different going on. The box plot makes the change in spread even more dramatically evident by showing us how much larger the IQR is. And here's where we also notice those two outliers among the bacilli group. All things that we need to keep in mind as we're thinking about what kind of effect does this bacilli treatment have and how do we interpret it. Here are the means and standard deviations for the two groups, which allows us to say that the average lifespan of a guinea pig in the control group was about 103 days longer. And again, the spread was much greater. The standard deviation is very nearly double in size, so that's quite a difference. An important measure for us is this difference in means. This is the actual test statistic that we're going to use in order to see whether or not the null hypothesis is believable. So the idea is that we notice a difference of nearly 103 days between the two groups. And what we have to do is find out, is a difference that large or larger something that could be expected if the null hypothesis is true? That is, is such a mean difference consistent with the null hypothesis, given what we know about sampling variability, given what we know about random variation, or do we suspect that there's something else going on? And of course, that's what we need a p-value for. So on to the randomization test. In StatKey, we'll want to do a randomization test for a difference in means. So that's the one we select. And now we've got to make sure that we include the data that we need. So we're going to have to get that from StatCrunch. So here's the data in the StatCrunch file, guinea pig lifespans. Um, it, the data do have to be in a particular format, so we have to be careful that they are. And if you need help with that, you can just let me know. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to highlight all of the data with the explanatory variable in the left column and the response variable in the right-hand column, and I'm just going to copy 
and then paste these into the um, edit data window. So I've got to eliminate what was already preloaded there, paste it in, hit OK, and now I've got the data that we need. You should be able to see the dot plots um, just like we viewed them before in the right hand side. A little bit small, but, um, but usable, the ones in stat key. Um, and also notice that it tells us what the difference is between the two sample means, 102.7 days. That's a way of verifying that we've got things entered correctly and accurately. So just as before, the idea is, if, is to say this, if the null hypothesis is true, then the difference in means that we saw is just completely attributed to the fact that the guinea pigs were randomized into the two groups. It's the assumption that the bacilli treatment didn't really have any effect whatsoever. So if that's true, if the difference in means came from just the randomization alone, then we should be able to reproduce that by re-randomizing as many times as we want the guinea pigs, and we should see a difference of 102.7 fairly commonly. Of course, if we don't, then what we're going to have is evidence that it's not the randomization that's responsible for the difference, but something else, perhaps even the bacilli treatment. So we could generate one sample at a time, and we know that this is just a start to showing us different randomizations, and we know that um, the differences in means are different each time because of the randomness that's involved in the process. But really what we want to see are roughly 5,000 different randomizations. So once we've got 5,000 randomizations, we're going to hit the two-tail button, and noting that our um, sample difference is a positive number, 102.7. We're going to change the number that's on the positive side down below here to our 102.7. What this does then is it colors for us in red all of those randomizations that were at least as extreme as the one in our sample. So there aren't very many of them, just a couple on this side and two or three on the other side. So these two numbers, the point zero 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 six on both sides, we have to add those two numbers together. So we're going to get a p-value of about 0 0.0012. So that's the p-value. Now that we've got that, it's time to head on to the interpreting and drawing conclusions. So a p-value of 0 0.0012 is close enough to that borderline that we're going to call it very strong evidence against the null hypothesis. Therefore, we're rejecting it. In other words, we don't think that random variation is what was responsible for the difference in the means. We found a statistically significant difference between the means in the two samples. The treatment and lifespans do appear to be associated. And what we can say in plain language is that the average lifespan is quite different depending on the treatment. On average, it was quite a bit shorter in the bacilli group than it was in the treatment group. Again, we'll have more to say about this example in the next chapter, but for now, that's all we've got. If you have any questions, let us know.